this evening. Police investigate an alleged double murder of gold miners in Region 7. Two masked men reportedly stole over $30 million worth of gold and two firearms. The Ghana Gold and Diamond Miners Association urges enhanced security and demands a thorough investigation. Former National Cyclist surrenders to Kanu regarding a significant drug seizure at CJIE. The discovery of 156 pounds of cocaine in two suitcases led to a wanted bulletin. Another individual is also sought for questioning. Regional Police Division 8 conducts a raid in Malia uncovering over 2,000 grams of marijuana. Spoiled child arrested at Lenora Stadium for possessing an unlicensed pistol. Previously charged with murder in 2020, he is currently in custody pending charges related to the firearm phone. Haiti declares a state of emergency and imposes a curfew following a surge in gangland violence. Thousands of prisoners escape after assaults on the country's two biggest prisons. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's headline news update for March 4th, 2024. I'm Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, police are investigating an alleged double murder of 50-year-old Zahir Mohammed Sharif, a gold miner of Bartika, and 26-year-old Donovan Washington, a porter of 7th Avenue Bartika, at Arimobak Dam, Kayuni River, Region 7, around 10 a.m. on Sunday, March 3rd. The suspects, two masked men on a red ATV, also allegedly carted out with 102 ounces of raw gold valued at $37 million and two licensed firearms, a 32 pistol and a 12-gauge shotgun, property of Sharif. Investigations reveal that Sharif owns a 6-inch land dredge operation at Arumobak Dam. He had washed down the raw gold earlier that day and left his camp with Donovan on the, an ATV en route to Bartica. Joel Steven, the general manager of Sharif's operation, alleged that around five minutes after his boss left the camp, he heard several loud explosions, which he suspected to be gunshots. He went to make checks in the area and found the two deceased men lying in the trail some distance away with gunshot injuries on their bodies. He also observed that Sharif's firearm and gold were missing. He later reported the matter to the Bartika police station. Sharif's body was examined and wounds consistent with gunshots were seen on his right upper chest, right thigh, right arm, and left upper back. Washington's body was also examined and several gunshot wounds were seen. Police found a 32 magazine with eight life matching rungs, seven 9 mm spent shells, and three 32 spent shells at the scene. Investigations continues. Meanwhile, today, the Ghana Gold and Diamond Miners Association issued a press release stating that it mourns the tragic loss of its members, Mohammed Sharif, and his colleague, Donovan Washington. This incident follows a similar robbery and murder of another association member, Ricky Ambrose, in December 2022 at the exact location. The association urges all miners to prioritize security measures and calls on the Ghana police force to enhance security in the interior regions for miners. Expressing sympathy to the affected families and friends, the GGDMA demands that the authorities conduct a thorough investigation of the incident and bring the perpetrators to justice. In other news, former national cyclist Tyron Hamilton, who was the subject of a wanted bulletin following a significant drug seizure at the Chedi Chagan International Airport, has surrendered himself to the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit just days after the bulletin was issued. Canu officials confirmed Hamilton surrendered earlier today, noting that he was accompanied by his legal representative, Nigel Hughes. Hamilton is to be questioned regarding the discovery of 156 pounds of cocaine on February 22, 2024 at the Chedi Changan International Airport. The seized cocaine, valued at some $64 million, was found in two suitcases destined for loading onto a British Airways flight. Additionally, another individual, Gavin Mackey, is also sought for questioning in connection with the drug seizure, with a wanted bulletin issued for him. While Gavin Mackey's wife, Jessica Mackey, was initially apprehended, she has been released. Moving on, 42-year-old Tion Allen, also known as Spoiled Child of Georgetown, was arrested for possession of an unlicensed firearm and ammunition at the Lenora Stadium in West Coast Demerara on Sunday, March 3rd. Reports said that around 11 p.m., a team of officers led by a woman superintendent from the Regional Police Division 3 intercepted and searched Allen after acting suspiciously as he attempted to enter the stadium during an event. 
When approached and asked to submit to a search, Allen initially resisted, but was eventually searched along with a bag he was carrying which contained an unlicensed 9mm pistol along with 18 live matching rounds of ammunition. When questioned about the firearm's ownership, Allen refused to cooperate and became disorderly. Subsequently, he was arrested and taken to the Lenora police station along with the firearm and ammunition. Upon arrival, he confirmed that he did not possess a license for the firearm. Allen is currently in police custody pending charges related to the possession of an unlicensed firearm and ammunition. Tion Allen is no stranger to the law. In 2020, he was charged with the murder of his girlfriend, 28-year-old Calissa Hunt of Amelia's Ward, Linden. Hunt died following a shooting at her home in Amelia's Ward. She was shot once in her chest and pronounced dead on arrival at the McKenzie Public Hospital. Allen has since been freed of the charge based on legal advice from the DPD office. Stick around when we return. Temporary ferry services implemented for the Perico Supernam route and Region 6 residents receive steel and cement subsidy vouchers to kickstart home construction. Experience more than award-winning speed. Way more. Get the best that LTE has to offer on Digicel, officially the fastest mobile network in Guyana. Ookla, the company behind Speedtest, recognizes Digicel as the best mobile network in Guyana. With the best LTE experience and the fastest data speeds, experience it all with Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sneak Lane with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Curry smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Welcome back. The distribution of seal and cement subsidy vouchers in Region 6 saw over 40 individuals receiving support to commence construction on their homes. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll emphasized that this initiative is injecting $10 million into the region's economy. The Steel and Cement Subsidy Program, announced by President Dr. Mohamed Irfanali in July 2022, aims to expedite and reduce home builders' infrastructure expenses. Some 1,058 vouchers have been distributed to Guyanese countrywide between October 2022 and February 2024. Minister Kroll also highlighted housing developments and investments in Region 6 and the efforts to address the backlog of housing applications. The minister and his team also addressed other housing and water-related concerns in several communities in that region. 
In other news, law enforcement officers from Regional Police Division 8 executed a raid operation at Madia Landing Arcade, uncovering over 2,000 grams of marijuana. The raid was conducted on Friday between 2.30 and 4 p.m. and targeted an unfenced yard with multiple houses on School Street, Madia. During the operation, six bulky plastic bags containing leaves, seeds, and stems suspected to be cannabis were discovered in an abundant area within the yard. The confiscated narcotics were photographed on site before being transported to the Madia police station for weighing, where they totaled over four pounds. However, no arrests were made. Moving on. The Transport and Harbor Department wishes to notify the public that emergency repairs will be carried out due to extensive damage to the abutment beams and link span bridge at the Perica and Supernam Salins. Works will commence from Sunday, March 10th to Saturday, March 16, 2024. The Transport and Harbor Department will maintain ferry services between Perica and Supernam. The services will continue even as workers are carrying out the repairs. However, it is important to note that there will be some changes to the service. During this period, the MV Sabanto and the MV Canawan will not be used on the Supernam route. Vessels using side boardings will be utilized. The daily schedule will remain the same during the period. Bookings for these vessels will be made through ferry pass. Each vessel is estimated to take approximately two and a half hours to complete a journey. Therefore, the Transport and Harbor Department advises passengers to consider this when planning their trips and to factor in any delays due to unforeseen circumstances. Persons with medical emergencies who may wish to travel during this period are advised to consider this. The Transport and Harbor Department understands that the rice season has started and therefore there will be an increase in the movements of trucks and trailers transporting paddy and rice between the regions. The agency is asking for consideration and patience as it seeks to serve everyone under a temporary arrangement. All trucks transporting cargo will be restricted to 20 tons during this time. The 25-ton capacity will be reinstated after the repairs are completed. The Transport and Harbor Department is kindly requesting the public's patience and encourages drivers and commuters to exercise care and caution as repair works are being done. Don't go after the break. Homeless in the U.S., Supreme Court seeks to make homelessness illegal, and South Korea protests, doctors rally against healthcare reform. <sighs> Not a single bar of service. Not with us. Digicel officially has the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Ookla, the company behind Speed Test, recognizes Digicel as the network with the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Be it in Aishalton or in Etteringbang, we got you covered. Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good, girl, forget things. Good. What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Cheaply, with a gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Copy smart make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services. 316 Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone 226 1082. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years.
Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Haiti's government has declared a state of emergency and imposed a curfew after an explosion of gang-led violence over the weekend saw thousands of prisoners escape after assaults on the country's two biggest prisons. Prime Minister Ariel Henry has been visiting Kenya trying to form up an international police force to help patrol the streets. Al Jazeera's Stephanie Decker reports. The dead lie in the streets. The result of an ambush by gang members on a prison in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. Nearly 4,000 prisoners were freed, including high-profile gang members. I took two bullets, one under my arm and one in my chest. People have been dying since Sunday evening. I was sleeping in my cell. I woke up when I heard shooting. I saw the cell gate open. Many of the prisoners escaped and many died. Police have been deployed since Thursday as well-armed gangs have stepped up their attacks, including on the international airport. The powerful gangs are in control of parts of the country and estimated 80% of the capital, and they say they want Prime Minister Ariel Henry to stand down. Thank you very much. Henry left for Kenya last week to finalize a deal for an international force to help restore order in Haiti. It would be part of a UN task force. That's something that appears to have prompted the latest violence. It's partly blamed on gangster and former police officer Jimmy Cherize, known as Barbecue, who's been sanctioned by the UN and the US. It's mainly linked to that uh, official trip that the Prime Minister took to Kenya. Uh, as a uh, notorious gang leader, uh, Barbecue uh, claimed that uh, he united uh, pretty much all the gangs, uh, rival gangs in Port-au-Prince, to fight against the government and topple it um, in response to the, that deal that the Prime Minister uh, signed with the Kenyan government. Gang violence and insecurity has plagued Haiti for years, exacerbated by the 2021 assassination of President Jovenel Moise. No elections have been held since 2016. A state of emergency has been declared until Wednesday, when a nighttime curfew will be in effect from 6 p.m. until 5 a.m. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera. There have been efforts to criminalize people who live on the streets in the United States. Supreme Court judges are due to rule on whether a law that essentially makes being homeless a crime is constitutional. The ruling could affect the lives of more than half of a million people. Al Jazeera's Robert Reynolds reports. Background, so this is like Cain and Abel stuff. She calls herself Omen. She lives on a patch of broken sidewalk with a group of other homeless people next to a busy street. It's a harsh existence. We're constantly shuffled around like you don't get to rest like you're constantly just trying to pay attention and be aware of when everything is going to get destroyed stolen support service providers for the homeless say people like omen are suffering the consequences of decades of failed national policy we have a broken mental health system we have a broken foster care system we have some folks who ended up homeless because of an addiction we have some folks who start substance misuse once they become homeless. Now possible changes to U.S. law could make life more difficult for homeless people. In 2013, the town of Grants Pass, Oregon passed an ordinance criminalizing any form of camping or staying overnight on public property. An appeals court threw out the law, but the city took the case to the Supreme Court. States and urban areas, including Los Angeles County, which has a homeless population of more than 75,000, support the camping ban. One L.A. County supervisor, Catherine Barger, said in a statement, if local governments are restricted from regulating encampments on public property, we are left powerless to effectively address our worsening homelessness crisis. Advocates for the homeless say criminalizing people who live on the streets simply won't work, especially in a city like Los Angeles. You can criminalize people. We don't have space to put them in a jail. It's not going to happen. You can give every person in these tents as many tickets as you want, but where are you going to put them? If you kick them out of here, they'll go set up a block later. Omen, who creates art from found objects, says she has no idea where she will be living in a week, a year, or beyond. 
I don't know what the answer is, but it is not persecuting the people that have already suffered so much. Last year, more than 650,000 people in the U.S. were homeless at some point in time, the highest number recorded since data began being collected nearly two decades ago. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Los Angeles. Internationally, a rally against the South Korean government's medical reform measures has drawn its largest crowd yet. The Doctors' Association warns it's only the start of what it expects will be a long fight against government plans. Al Jazeera's Eunice Kim reports. Organizers say tens of thousands came from across South Korea to fight against the government's medical reform plans. It's the largest crowd yet in this week's-long battle. The government deceives the public's eyes in order to exploit policies and systems to make doctors eternal medical slaves. The doctors group says the plan to add an additional 10,000 doctors within 10 years not only is premature but will also further drive doctors away from areas of need towards the more lucrative private practice. One of the sectors the government is looking to enhance is publicly run hospitals to address a shortage in essential medical care, especially in rural areas, which account for less than 10 percent of South Korea's medical system and which is already struggling to fill vacancies despite offering competitive pay. Even public hospitals within Seoul are in a difficult situation, according to the city's mayor. Since coming to office two years ago, I've been working to improve working conditions for doctors and proposed considerable salaries, but there are no applicants. As the standoff enters a third week, the government is preparing to suspend the medical licenses of the first batch among the thousands of young doctors who've walked off the job in protest. The tug-of-war has galvanized public support for President Yoon song yeol who struggled in the polls. Latest figures suggest his approval rating has increased by a whopping 10 percentage points since a month ago. Still, some veteran politicians who agree with raising the number of doctors are calling for a more deliberated approach. Some in the ruling party may be looking to emulate the U.S.'s President Reagan or the U.K.'s Thatcher and their forceful resolution of labor strikes. But this approach doesn't always succeed, and I hope the government knows this current medical crisis is much more complex. In the absence of dialogue, medical workers filling the void left by the striking junior doctors warn of a further reduction in crucial medical services and growing fatigue among staff. Eunice Kim, Al Jazeera, Seoul. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast. And that is Safety TV2 Headline News for this Monday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6 30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other. <laughs>